you can do with ordinary objects. So without further ado, grab yourself some elastic bands and let's learn this first trick. This first one uses two elastic bands. You loop them onto your fingers like so, and with just a press, they link visually, and the spectator can even pinch them as they unlink, and everything is examinable. I think it's really important to use two bands of two different colours, just so that the link stands out a bit more. And the setup looks a little bit like this. Your ring finger here is going to go through the top band, and then through the bottom band, and this ring finger is going to pull in the gap, so that it's alternating like so. Now let go with the right index finger, and it's going to go through this little triangle that you see over here, and then once again, this ring finger is going to go in the gap and pull everything taut. So if I let everything go, and we're back to how we started, essentially these two middle bands are going to flip over each other. So they're going to swap fully round, do a little 360, and you end up with the bands linked already on both sides, and this is hidden in the hand. When it links, let go with one, and it's linked. When it unlinks, let go with the other, and it unlinks. And of course, everything is examinable. Keeping with the elastic bands, trick number two looks a little bit like this. You loop it onto your fingers like so. You grab the band and pull once, pull twice through skin and bone. It passes to your other two fingers. Really, really visual effect, and it's so easy to do. Place it onto your index and middle fingers, and at the back, you're going to pull this out and when you curl your hand into a fist, all your fingers are going to go into the band at the back. All of your fingers at the back, but from the front, it looks like it's just your index and middle, and now you can do this, and all I'm going to do is extend, and you can actually do this visually. You can just extend and it pops onto the other fingers, but if you want to do the move I did, then all I'm doing is literally just miming. So it's all set up at the back. I grab here, I extend, it's already on the other fingers, but then I just pull and I make the magic that little bit more sort of, uh, I don't know, it really feels like it's going through your fingers. I quite like that moment, but it is up to you. And trick number three, sticking with the elastic bands once again, is this, a little bit daft, but it looks like it goes up your nose. It's, it's just going down into the hand, but done quickly and with a bit of an upwards action. It kind of looks like it goes up your nose. <laughs> That's what trick number four looks like, and this is the secret. We actually have a tic-tac box here that is a contraption to change the playing card. You see, this is actually a separate piece altogether. It's a blue bit of playing card, and we've got a red bit here. Now this all has magnets on the back. So there's one magnet up here behind the label, and there's two magnets behind the playing card, and it's magnetized to these two magnets. So essentially, it's going to slide from this upwards position, and with a bit of motion, slide to the downward position and magnetize in place. And there are two magnets on the bottom so that it won't move, and only one at the top so that I can shake it loose. So this bit of card is magnetized at the top on this single magnet, and then when I do the downward motion, it falls to the lower portion and magnetizes with both of these magnets, lining up and looking like the card has changed color. And it looks like this. Trick number five looks like this. Okay, so it's a little bit disgusting, but the good news is this trick can be applied to so many different principles, not just bottle top through cheek, although personally I think that's a really good idea, especially for the sort of audience I'll perform this to. Like, if I'm at a party where everyone's cracking open bottle tops, this is something that I think would fit that environment, because it's disgusting, it's gross, it's going to get a big reaction from audiences that are drinking alcohol. I don't know, personally I think it fits the vibe, but if you want to adapt this to other objects, it doesn't just use bottle tops, you can use lots of other objects as well, and you don't have to just place it through your cheek if you don't want to, so lots of customizations available on this one, and yes, it does use two bottle tops. One goes in the mouth, and I am able to just keep it in my cheek and talk fairly naturally, a little bit of a lisp, but yeah, fairly naturally. So this goes in the cheek, do not choke, and uh, perform this at your own risk. You see, I can talk fairly normally, there's a slight lisp, but I don't think anyone's really going to notice. And the thing with the bottle top is, if I take this out just while I'm explaining, the thing with the bottle top is it has a ridged edge, so I can do this false transfer really, really easily with a bottle top, because 
it just folds. Like I'm, I'm not really doing any sleight of hand here. I'm just pressing with my thumb and it folds away out of view from my fingertips. So it's a really, really nice vanish. And you can use that on its own if you want to, although I think everyone's just gonna think it's in this hand, which is quite why I quite like the sort of transfer or teleporting it to somewhere or, you know, putting it inside a bottle. There are so many possibilities, but essentially uh, it's something that I like to call the corner vanish because uh, it's got a little sort of corner on it and you just use that to angle it out the way. And then with the bottle top in your mouth, you can pretend to push it into your cheek and then it's in your mouth or whatever. It's entirely up to you, but that is the corner vanish. Trick number six looks like this. Obviously you show both sides to be red. With a wave of the hand, it turns white. And then trick number seven, you cause that to vanish. That is a, a nice little additional to it, but you don't have to do that if you don't want. Focusing on this then, you have one white side, one red side. This is called the paddle move, and it is so versatile, very underrated, and yeah, it's a little bit basic, but when used with unusual objects or everyday things that people might see, like a nail file, for instance, uh, yeah, this is just so versatile. All I'm doing is flipping it over, so I'm showing the same side. I'm just turning this over and turning it back, turning it over, turning it back. Instead of doing this, I'm literally just rolling it with my thumb as I turn it over. So the bigger action hides the smaller action and it's super convincing. I mean, that just looks, even to me on camera, like I'm showing both sides. It is crazy how convincing this is. Then when I want to do the change, as I cover it up, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just turning it over as I cover it up and it changes color. Now you can show both sides again as a little convincer, don't overdo it. And then I like to go into the vanish. And this is trick number seven. You place it into your hand, snap your fingers, and it completely disappears. Now here, I just used the edge of the camera to drop it out of frame onto the floor, but if you're at a table, you can just lap it. Lapping is essentially dropping it off the table, out of view, and no one will see it. But this is a super simple, impromptu vanish. I do this loads of times. You can do this with cigarettes, with lighters, with, you know, whatever you have around you. Pens, if the pen is short enough, or a little pencil here. Uh, you can use that if you want to. Essentially, all you're going to do is as you cover it up, you're going to do this movement. So your middle finger is going to pull it into your hand just out of view. So your index finger and thumb are holding it, but your middle finger is the one that pulls it out of view. And the less movement with this hand, the better. So it just kind of looks like it goes into the hand and then you can make it disappear. You can make it slow or quick, it really doesn't matter. I think it's a really nice way of uh, vanishing something. If you want, you can even use this as like a penetration effect. You hold this above the table and this below the table. You slam, you show it's gone, you show it's underneath the table. Again, so many customizations to make. That is trick number seven. So there we have it for this video. Really hope you enjoyed these seven tutorials back to back to back. If you did, make sure to drop a like on the video. Really means a lot and it means more people can see this video and you're really helping the channel out. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in the next video.